In this part, we create our very first version of the GUI, a simple frame. On the side, we'll also learn a little bit about threads. So let's create the first class. And let's call that application. And then in that class, we'll add a main method. So that's public static void main, which takes a string array as an argument which contains the command line arguments. We're not going to use them, but we could if we wanted. So let's first print a little message here that we know that the application is starting. And I'd also like to print in which thread we are currently running or which thread is executing that code. And we can figure out which thread by using the static method in the thread class. Thread current thread. This method here will return a thread object and we will turn the thread object into a string, calling toString here, and concatenate that into our output. So if we run our program, let's see whether we can compile it. If we run our program, we should see at the output starting thread and then the name or some kind of description of the thread that is executing this. Let's run it. And indeed we see we invoked application.main and it printed starting thread and then this string here thread main 5 main. So that thread with id 5 and the name of the thread is main. Now in Java the main method always is executed by the main thread. But if we want to do graphical user interfaces, events that are created by the user, like if you click on the mouse button, if you press a keyboard key when you type text, those events are not processed by the main thread, but by a different thread. And that thread, that other thread, is called the event dispatch thread. The entire graphical user interface toolkit swing that we use here is not really thread safe. So you cannot use it with multiple threads at the same time. Nothing is synchronized. And you should only call methods in the swing classes from within the event dispatch thread, and not from the main thread or from other threads. And so let's be a little bit fundamentalist here. And let's make sure that we are going to build our GUI, create our frame, not from within the main thread, but from within this event dispatch thread. Now, how can we do that? Well, there's uh, an API that we can use here. It's part of the event dispatching logic here. It's in event queue, invoke later. So this method here takes an argument. And that argument is a runnable object, which has a run method. And that run method will be executed later, at some point, pretty soon, but at some point later, by the event dispatch thread, not by the main thread. OK, so let's try this out. Let's create a new runnable. We'll use an anonymous in the class here. So we now created a new class that implements the runnable interface. And it needs to, um, sorry, void. It needs to actually implement the run method that this interface introduces. And then here we can do whatever we want. And that code here will be executed by the event dispatch thread. So let's just print out something else. Um, creating GUI. And also here, let's print the thread that is executing that. So we can ask the system, give us the current thread object, and we turn that object into a string, and we print it out. Okay. Create GUI in event dispatch thread. Now let's compile this. Oops. That doesn't work. We need to import 
the event queue class that's in Java AWT event queue. That should be it. Let's try again. It compiles. Let's run it. Let's first clear the console here and run the program. And we see two methods get called. First starting in the main thread and then creating GUI in the AWT event queue zero thread. That's the event dispatch thread. Okay. We don't have any graphical user interface, but you can create that now. So how do we create that? We create a top level window, which in Swing is a J frame. So we can say new J frame. Just like that. We have to import that, of course. Import Java X Swing. That's the package where all the Swing components are. J frame. Let's try. This compiles. Let's see what happens. Run. Hmm. Nothing showing. So what could be the problem here? Well, if you're creating a frame, you're not showing it yet. To show it, you have to actually have to call set visible. Set visible true. True. Let's compile again and let's run. Here we are. We have our little frame. We can resize it. It has the standard decorations of a Mac OS X frame and we can terminate here. Okay, now this is not exactly very nice. Let's introduce a local variable like this and then you can say frame.set visible like that. Looks maybe a little bit better. Also, we can pass an argument to the constructor which will be the title of that frame. Let's run it again. And here we are. We have a title, Pac-Man. So that is our frame that we created in the event dispatch thread, like everything else in the run method. In the event dispatch thread, we used the JFrame class. We created an object of that class and we invoked set visible true, which made this frame visible and started our graphical user interface application.